the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A feeling of expectancy had grown among the people who were beginning to think that John might be the Christ. So John declared before them all, I baptise you with water, but someone is coming, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to undo the strap of his sandals. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now when all the people had been baptised, and while Jesus, after his own baptism, was at prayer, heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily shape, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had been born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant King of the Jews? they asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared, and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know, so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees they did him homage. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, and return to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of Mass we're going to be singing um, the, the hymn, We Three Kings. So obviously we think about the epiphany um, of the Magi being three kings. But in the fact, when we're reading the text from Matthew's Gospel, we might think of it really as the two kings. Did you notice that at the beginning, Matthew goes through King Herod, and then the wise men are looking for the king, the newborn king. So we're presented at the beginning of his gospel with two kings. But for the people right in the early uh, Christian church, the first century, when they heard King Herod, they weren't exactly thinking, oh, good King Herod. You know, listening to the name King Herod would be a bit like saying um, Adolf Hitler, really, to us, right? Some nice wise men went to see Adolf Hitler to tell him, to ask him where the new Reichsfuhrer was born because they wanted to see him. And, and then and Matthew says, oh yes, and the Reichsfuhrer Hitler said, oh good, yes, I'd like to see him too. That's the kind of thing, it's the irony that Matthew's presenting us with, with the king, who was a terrible, bad king. We know what he did a bit later in the chapter as well, don't we? He was so bad, he had the, the, the holy innocents slaughtered because in his rage he wanted to make sure he killed Jesus. This is a terrible tyrant. That wasn't the only bad thing he did. And so we're presented with this man who is putting on a nice persona saying, oh yes, seeing the, the wise men privately, and yes, go and find Jesus, and I want to see him too. He's lying through his teeth. He's worried 
about this little child. It says child here. In fact, the Greek is a little child, emphasizing how small and vulnerable Jesus is. But he is the king. He's the real king. So we're given this early in Matthew's gospel. A little bit of an indication about who Jesus is. He's a king who is threatening a terrible tyrant who's also calling himself a king. This is who Jesus is coming into this world. So what happens? Um, Herod calls together um, all the chief priests and the scribes. Well, the word, word that it's, it's using for call together is the same word as synagogue. Um, in Greek, it's so synagoguing. So he's calling together, he's synagoguing, as it were, um, the chief priests and the scribes. So what Matthew is doing there, by a coincidence perhaps, um, is using the word to synagogue to emphasize that this is the Jewish people who instantly recognize the text of saying, yes, Jesus should be born in Bethlehem, but are going to be the people, um, the authorities, Jewish authorities, going to reject Jesus. But the ones who are accepting him are the wise men, the Magi, who come from the East, who are not Jewish people at all. They're not part of the chosen people. So there's another irony that we're presented with. The two kings are now presented with this irony of gathering together, making a synagogue, as it were, of um, the, the Jewish authorities who are going to reject Jesus, even they know perfectly well. You can just say, oh, it's like he's saying, what's going on here? And they say, oh, yes, of course it's going to be Bethlehem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah of course we know that. You know. And yet they're going to be rejecting him. Whilst the ones who've made the real effort and have, by astrology or whatever, by a divine revelation, of course, really, have come to find Jesus. And they've left everything over there, wherever they came from, however many there were. We don't know whether there were three or not. There were three gifts. Um, but they, they left everything to come and find Jesus. Um, so here we've got another ir ironic juxtaposition of two people here. So what are we learning from these wise men? We're looking at our crib now, these wise men who've, who've made a long journey. First of all, that there's salvation for everybody. It's not just for the Jewish people, the chosen people of God. And we're learning for ourselves as well. Make the effort... They said, no, we're going to leave um, our, our country and come, I'm going to find this child Jesus. We want to know who he is. They'd seen a star. We don't know that they knew much more apart from the fact that he was some kind of king. But they wanted to find out who this Jesus was. And that means for us, making some effort too. Yeah, Spending some time thinking about him, contemplating him, asking him who he is. Now, at the end of this, we have the, um, the wise men wanting to do Jesus homage, to give him homage. That's the reason for coming, wasn't it? That they said to Herod, we want to give him homage. We want to worship him. And so we, we say the same for ourselves too, just like the wise men. I wish to seek Jesus, to know him, in order to worship him. To say, yes, you are my God, to adore, to praise him, to glorify him. Which is, yes, the high point in the liturgy, especially the Eucharist at Mass. But throughout our lives, in our, the way we pray and the way we speak to other people about him, the way we evangelize and so on, we're giving glory to God and we're doing him homage, just like the wise men were. I'm sure when they got back to their own country, they would have told their fellow countrymen all about this wonder that they had seen. And they gave Jesus gifts. So what were the gifts signifying? Um, somehow, obviously, they had some kind of revelation from God. They had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, the gold was to signify his kingship, because uh, obviously it's valuable. It's something you'd find in the treasury of a king. So they offered him gold in whatever way it was presented to Jesus, because they knew he had a kingly state. And they offered him frankincense. Frankincense is used, like we often see in church, um, incense, burning incense is a sign of our prayers going up to God and worship, adoration of God. So as well as having a recognition that he was um, kingly, royal, and they also recognize his, his, in some sense his divinity. Um, obviously we understand it with a fuller revelation. But they had um, some uh, revelation that they needed to give him something fitting 
for God, fitting for worship. And myrrh, well myrrh was used for embalming the dead. So they were recognizing two of these great things that you might say in the worldly eyes of kingship and divinity, but also his mission was to die for us. Um, so in these gifts, um, we recognize um, something of a revelation of who Jesus is, the King, the divine King, and the one who was to be crucified and to rise again for love of us.